230 miles south of Salt Lake Valley is the desert community of Moab, Utah. Situated among the towering red rock cliffs of Navajo and Wingate Sandstone, it is the jumping off place of our adventurous three-day river trips on the Colorado River. Some 200 million years ago, the area of southeastern Utah was situated along the hot, humid region of the equator. Off to the west were the ancient seas that periodically rose and moved inland, covering the existing land with additional sand and silt. Moab, in those times, was located at the base of this mountain range, in a long oval basin, much like Salt Lake City is situated up against the Wasatch Mountains. Slowly, over many millions of years, the basin filled up with alternating layers of salt and rock debris from the eroding mountains. Rugged rock formations of every description now dot the land of Utah's red rock country, and Moab is the center for exploring this vast, untamed, and ever-changing wilderness. Canyonlands is the name that is given to this rugged landscape, and Worldwide River Expeditions is proud to be your host during your stay in this unique wilderness setting. Worldwide River Expeditions is one of the West's oldest and most experienced whitewater tour operators, having started operations in 1971. The company president and owner is Richard Jones, who began running the rivers in 1958 as a Boy Scout through Glen Canyon, now known today as Lake Powell. Richard brings over 40 years and 25,000 river miles of experience to the business. The setting for this adventurous three-day river outing is the Colorado River, starting 26 miles upriver from Moab. Locally, the area is known as Professor Valley or Fisher Towers. This rugged country is renowned for its immense beauty. Filmmakers from around the world come to Fisher Towers to make movies and commercials. It's not uncommon to see the mesas, spires, and buttes of Professor Valley in commercials advertising running shoes, soft drinks, sport utility vehicles, and rock concerts. Portions of feature films have also been filmed in this area adjacent to the river, such as Cheyenne Autumn, Soldier Blue, Rio Conchos, Ten Who Dared, Geronimo, City Slickers, and Thelma and Louise. Moab is approximately four and a half hours from Salt Lake City. Our meeting time in Moab is 9 a.m. Some groups will come to Moab the day before and stay at one of the local campgrounds, while others will opt to leave at 4 a.m. and drive down that morning. Staff from Worldwide will meet your group at a prearranged location and assist in dropping off vehicles at the warehouse for storage until you return. The Worldwide warehouse sits on two acres of land that is enclosed by a chain link fence and watched over by our company managers. After your group has breakfast and personal belongings are assembled for transports to the camp, river guides will outfit each passenger with a life jacket, which they will take on the bus to the put-in location. There's a small store at the warehouse where colorful river t-shirts, river sandals, river shorts, waterproof maps, sunglasses, and film are available. Many youth like to buy the worldwide t-shirts they see the river guides wearing. By 10 a.m., the bus leaves the warehouse yard and heads for the river put-in. The truck with the communal camping gear, food, and personal items will leave at a later time and will meet your group at a pre-established BLM campground called Hiddle Bottom. Arrival time at the river is between 11 a.m. and noon. The boats are unloaded from the trailers and placed in the water. While some guides are taking charge of the boats and related equipment, other guides are preparing a scrumptious lunch that consists of fresh meat, cheese, vegetables, bread and fruits, ice cold lemonade, and a dessert. It's laid out buffet style and you serve yourself. If you go hungry on a worldwide river trip, it's your own fault. At the start of each trip, each participant is given a drinking cup that you will use for the duration of your trip and can be taken home as a souvenir. There will be marking pens available, so be sure to put your name on the bottom of your cup. After a comprehensive safety talk about being in and around the water, the wearing of the life jackets, first aid, and how to control the boats, it's time to hop in the boats and head into the wild blue yonder. Each boat will hold 10 paddlers plus a guide. The guide is responsible for instructing paddle commands and inform our guests of river rules and etiquette. He or she will do their best to answer your questions about the river, its history and geology, 
And if they don't know the answer, you can be sure that they will make one up to suit the occasion. River guides are notorious for telling tall tales, spinning yarns, and pulling your leg. Water fighting, swimming, and learning to control the boat through the use of verbal commands are the order of the day. Oftentimes, the guides will allow our guests to act as a guide in issuing paddle commands, giving others the opportunity to be a leader of the raft. On either side of the river rise the magnificent walls of wind-blown Wingate sandstone. Red in color because of staining by rusting iron found in the grains of sand, the rock is often marked by long streaks of black, which represents other minerals found in the sandstone. This black streaking is called desert varnish. Depending on the speed of the current, the boats will reach camp between 3 and 5 in the afternoon. Once the boats are secured, life jackets and paddles placed in the boats, the paddle rafters locate their individual duffel bags that were brought to camp by a supply truck. While camp is being made, the guides begin preparation for dinner. The first night's campground is called Hittle Bottom. It was the site of an early homestead and ranch along the river, and remains of the cabin can still be seen within the campground. The site is maintained by the Bureau of Land Management, or BLM, as part of their maintenance program and have placed several cement toilets for public use within the confines of the campground. Before long, the guides have the evening dinner ready. One of the nice features about worldwide sponsored youth outing is that the leaders do not have to concern themselves with meal planning or meal preparation. The guides take care of everything, including cleanup. The leaders can sit back, relax, and just enjoy the camaraderie of their group. Evenings are a special time in the river. The wilderness setting of the camp, the high canyon cliff walls, the ever-present river, the nighttime sky with its millions of shining stars all combine to create a rather impressive atmosphere. An atmosphere that tends to bring groups such as yours to a closer relationship with each other, be it spiritual or a greater respect for the natural surroundings Southern Utah provides. On the first night's camp, the guides take responsibility for the evening's activities, while the second night is reserved for the youth groups and their leaders. With proper planning and foresight, this second night's activity can be the highlight of the trip and a great time for telling stories and fireside activities. Each group is responsible for its own camping equipment and tents. Even though the trip takes place in the desert, it does rain here, and tents are an absolute must. Rain showers can vary from light sprinkles to furious gully washers that flood the campground and turn the river a bright red muddy color. Morning comes early on the second day and while the guests are catching their last 40 winks, the guides are busily preparing the morning breakfast, which may be blueberry pancakes and sausage, cantaloupe, or tasty French toast smothered with warm syrup and butter topped off with crispy bacon and fruit and juices. On the second day of rafting, groups will encounter seven small rapids along the stretch of the river known as the Daly Section. Though the rapids are small in comparison to the rapids found in Cataract Canyon, they are still fun. And if a boat crew is not careful, they will find themselves in the water with their boat upside down. Under the direction of the guide, the crews will paddle the rafts through the rapids, taking proper care to stay out of the holes and away from the cliff walls. A special treat is prepared for the rafters on this day. After being on the river in the hot sun all day, the guides pull their boats ashore, set up the lunch tables, and prepare delicious banana splits for everyone. Now who could ever expect to find such a delectable treat out in the desert? After a good night's rest and a hearty breakfast of pancakes, eggs, sausages, fruit, and drink, the rafters launch their paddle boats back into the river for the final float to the Moab City Bridge. Along the way, it's more swimming, water fighting, or simply relaxing in the warm sun. Arrival time at the bridge is between noon and 1 p.m. Boats and boating equipment are loaded onto the trailers and the rafters into their waiting buses. Back to the warehouse, the river guides prepare lunch while guests find their personal duffel bags, change into dry clothes, and repack their cars in preparation for leaving for home. I gotta tell you, nobody was more scared or feeling more out of shape, more too old to do anything than I did. And it has just been a blast. I can, 
I would do it again in a heartbeat. I'm real excited. And to be able to relax and enjoy it and have everybody do the cleanup, the cooking, and everything has been great. For about two-thirds of our, of our youth, of the group of 65 we have here, this is the first time they've come to this country, and it's beautiful. And uh, they're learning and, and uh, taking a lot of pictures and having some uh, pretty good highs. The rapids have been wonderful. I mean, they're not too, not too uh, uh, scary for the first timers and uh, just scary enough for us uh, who've been through it a few times ourselves. So it's been very enjoyable. The first time actually I went down Worldwide River Expeditions was when I was a teenager. And we did it for a youth conference. And here, now 10 years later, I'm, I'm now in charge of it as young men's president. And I definitely remember it. And uh, because of the fact this was my first river run that I've ever been on, and since then I've been on probably 20 or 30 of them, and I've enjoyed it ever since. And so I, I'm sure that these young men and young women will, will look forward to this as an experience that they'll never forget. It's been a great three days living on the river and camping under the stars. Being away from home and having to rough it a bit helps one to appreciate more the conveniences of one's home. Above all, this wilderness experience was shared with members of your group, and it is a memory that will be reflected upon time and again as the years go by. Our goal is to provide our guests a memory of the great outdoors in a safe environment, allowing your group a time of their life, a time for bonding and for learning. We hope to see you soon.